this is kind of a nice case example of kind of something that we see relatively probably frequently or a lot of us see relatively frequently. And so I think it's kind of a nice case example, um, you know, that's something that's not going to be maybe a crazy double osteotomy or anything like that, but and it is relatively straightforward, but it has lots of nice talking points to say, okay, well, how would you manage each of these individual things? And so there's a 22 year old female who's had multiple years of bilateral anterior knee pain and swelling. We see that a lot, right? Teenagers, early 20 year old females, bilateral knee pain for many years, very common. She's failed six months of physical therapy, bracing anti-inflammatory. She's done a lot of conservative things. She wants to continue running, wants to continue being active, but she cannot because she's limited by her knee pain. And so her physical exam, she has a joint effusion. She has lateral patellar tracking. If you look at the axial MRI there, you can see she's got lateral patellar tracking. Very common thing that we see, right, in some of these females that have kind of years of anterior knee, knee pain. She's got stable ligament exam, no joint line pain, no meniscal type of signs. There you can see at the end of the um, MRI there, that's measuring her TTTG, which is just one measurement, obviously, certainly that we can use. On alignment films, though, as well, she's got and her x-rays uh, imaging, her radiographic imaging, she's got well-maintained joint spaces. She's got about two degrees of symmetric valgus. So again, something we see common, like a little bit of valgus in these patellar maltracking patients, but in her case, not terrible or not super significant, but a little bit of valgus um, to predispose her to some patellar maltracking. Intact ligaments, intact menisci. You saw the lateral patellar translation. She's got somewhat lateral, but also central chondrosis on the patella, which I don't know if you could see um, as it went through there. Um, and then, so you can see it there. So she's got kind of lateral, but somewhat central. You can see it tracks over centrally there. And then she's got elevated parameters and elevated TTTG and elevated TT uh, PCL. And so this is her chondrosis on the diagnostic arthroscopy, again, relatively lateral to central grade three with the kind of central area of grade four in that area and central lateral portion of the patella. And so this is a kind of another example of kind of what can be done um, concurrently. So in this particular case, I'd like to do biopsy at that index procedure and then come back and do a Macy um, to, that con to that chondral defect of the patella and then do an anteromedializing tibial tubercle osteotomy, both to offload that with an anterior is the anteriorization part of the osteotomy and then medialize it some to bring the patella over to decrease that um, lateralization of the tubercle and uh, decrease that patellar um, lateral translation. And so this, this picture on the left is an example showing the different sizes of the cutting templates and, and showing actually how much different sizes you can see. And you can see on the patella, which is everted there in the picture on the right, it actually ended up being a pretty good size defect and a pretty good size lesion. And so we ended up using one of the larger oval um, cutting templates to size that defect in addition to doing the AMZ osteotomy. And so, so then this is her one year imaging study. So you can see really nice, well-maintained joint spaces. You can see that the osteotomy is pretty well healed. And then this is a one year MRI on the right. And so you can see really nice fill of that lateral to central patellar defect um, and, and, and a really nice outcome. And so she's back to running now and, and um, is happy with this one. And then, and then actually has very similar pathology on the other knee. And she wants the exact same procedure um, done on the other knee. Macy, autologous cultured chondrocytes on porcine collagen membrane, is an autologous cellularized scaffold product that is indicated for the repair of single or multiple symptomatic full thickness cartilage defects of the adult knee with or without bone involvement. Macy is intended for autologous use and must only be administered to the patient for whom it was manufactured. The implantation of Macy is to be performed via an arthrotomy to the knee joint under sterile conditions. The amount of Macy administered is dependent upon the size, surface in centimeter squared, of the cartilage defect. The implantation membrane is trimmed by the treating surgeon to the size and shape of the defect to ensure the damaged area is completely covered and implanted cell side down. Limitations of use Effectiveness of Macy in joints other than the knee has not been established. Safety and effectiveness of Macy in patients over the age of 55 years have not been established. Important safety information. Macy is contraindicated in patients with a known history of hypersensitivity to gentamicin, other amino glycosides, or products of porcine or bovine origin. Macy is also contraindicated for patients with severe osteoarthritis of the knee, inflammatory arthritis, inflammatory joint disease, 
or uncorrected congenital blood coagulation disorders. MACI is also not indicated for use in patients who have undergone prior knee surgery in the past six months. Excluding surgery to procure a biopsy or a concomitant procedure to prepare the knee for a MACI implant. MACI is contraindicated in patients who are unable to follow a physician prescribed post surgical rehabilitation program. The safety of MACI in patients with malignancy in the area of cartilage biopsy or implant is unknown. Expansion of present malignant or dysplastic cells during the culturing process or implantation is possible. Patients undergoing procedures associated with MACI are not routinely tested for transmissible infectious diseases. A cartilage biopsy and MACI implant may carry the risk of transmitting infectious diseases to healthcare providers handling the tissue. Universal precautions should be employed when handling the biopsy samples and the MACI product. Final sterility test results are not available at the time of shipping. In the case of positive sterility results, healthcare provider or providers will be contacted. To create a favourable environment for healing, concomitant pathologies that include meniscal pathology, cruciate ligament instability and joint misalignment must be addressed prior to or concurrent with the implantation of MACI. Local treatment guidelines regarding the use of thromboprophylaxis and antibiotic prophylaxis around orthopaedic surgery should be followed. Use in patients with local inflammations or active infections in the bone, joint and surrounding soft tissue should be temporarily deferred until documented recovery. The MACI implant is not recommended during pregnancy. For implantations post-pregnancy, the safety of breastfeeding to infant has not been determined. Use of MACI in paediatric patients younger than 18 years of age or patients over 65 years of age has not been established. The most frequently occurring adverse reactions reported for MACI greater than 5% were arthralgia, tendonitis, back pain, joint swelling and joint effusion. Serious adverse reactions reported for MACI were arthralgia, cartilage injury, meniscus injury, treatment failure and osteoarthritis. For more information or to view full prescribing information, please go to macy.com.